Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this very special live stream. It's a preview of Series 2 of Property Elevator, which appears on your screens on Sky's uh, Property TV channel. Uh, and I have the pleasure to be joined by uh, my four fellow angels, uh, who I'll be introducing you to, and also uh, the show's co-producer as well. So we've got plenty to discuss, uh, all about Property Elevator, uh, what the show's all about, what you can expect when you watch the show, um, what some of the, uh, the angels are all about as well, and some of our views on property and the market going forward and the challenges we all face, and also an opportunity for you to ask your questions to our angels. So if you're tuned in, let us know uh, where you're watching us from. Leave your comments on the side. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe. We release tons of new content, all dedicated to helping you be more successful in property. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. We'll let you know as soon as we unload, uh, upload, not unload, upload. Yes, that's the right word. Okay, without much further ado, let me introduce you to our guests tonight. First of all, uh, Nicholas Woolwork. Hi there. Hi, Ranjan. Thanks for having me on. It's yes. fun tonight. Uh, yeah, good, to, uh, good to have you. And we'll, we'll learn more about um, your good self in a mo. And Paul Mahoney. Hi there. How are you doing, sir? Thank you for having me. I'm very well, thanks. And John Howard, of course. I'm very well, but I'm disappointed that I'm the only one wearing a tie. Oh, dear me. Well, I did wear one for the filming of the show. <laughs> a, bit unpro a bit unprofessional, I think. But there we go. And Helen Chorley, of course. How are you? Hi, Ranjan. I'm great. Lovely to be reunited with you all. So coming I'm to Malta. you from Malta. Indeed. And a person that you don't normally see on screen, and he's just told me this is the first uh, sort of podcasty interview thing he's ever done, uh, the show's uh, co-producer, Michael Hammond. Hi there. Yes, normally firmly on the other side of the camera. So You're not screen shy, are you? Uh, I'm, I'm not. I just prefer it on the other side. <laughs> so tell me, Michael, what's Property Elevator all about? What's the big idea? Well, the, the big idea is it's, it opens up the opportunity for people that are, are looking for either, either finance or a degree of mentoring and uh, kind of JV opens that up to, to people that obviously are very well experienced and uh, have the capability to do that. So um, completely unique on uh, UK TV and worldwide TV um, as it happens and uh, just a, a, a massive opportunity and also creates some great TV as well. Brilliant, brilliant. And when does the show air? When can people see this show? So the, the first programme is going to broadcast on the 15th of October at our, uh, at our very best prime time of 8 p.m. And you can see that on Sky 192. And uh, of course, John, How John Howard, um, uh, pleasure to be joined by my fellow angel, John Howard. Uh, John, you, it was your idea, wasn't it? Well, there's no, well, they say, yes, it was my idea really, but I, mean, I spoke to Michael and, and to be fair, it was a joint idea really, but I just felt that uh, there wasn't enough support and help for, for would-be, potential developers and investors uh, and I just thought it'd be a really good fun thing to do to get a, a low a, a number of experienced investors and developers and I just think we're a bit of a dysfunctional family really now the uh, the five of us and uh, you know we've had great fun filming this show and uh, and obviously we've got the next series coming up in March which I think we're all going to re-sign up to it and uh, and, and and do it that was well, and I think it'll be every every session, every season. I think will be better and better. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm feeling like saying whenever you see, um, you know, the Jonathan Wash show or Graham Norton, and you see all these um, uh, people talk about their TV shows and all of that, they always say we had plenty of fun on the sets. And I, I've always wanted to say that actually. Yeah, <laughs> we had plenty of fun on the sets. It was a real laugh, lots of banter, and all of that jazz. I never thought I'd have that opportunity to say those words, but there you go. <laughs> well, you can thank me for that, Ranjan. <laughs> so, um, and then you assembled um, the, the, this motley crew of um, yes. the four of us. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> well, how do we manage to get on then? <laughs> well, well, the most important thing is what I've learned in the last two or three years of being involved in, in property TV and so on is that the good guys need to stick together. And, and what I've 
what I've found is that, you know, you tend to be attracted to like minded people, professional people who have been there, seen it and done it and, and are decent and honest. And I think that's what it's all about. Definitely. Brilliant. Listen, yeah. I have a bit of a surprise for all you guys, um, because actually uh, on the show, what they did is um, they filmed some promo videos uh, where all of us get to introduce ourselves and um, basically big ourselves up a little bit and tell you what we do <laughs> in property. So uh, I just thought I would uh, play these for you um, right. and see what right. uh, uh, all of us think of uh, uh, all our experiences. So since I'm looking at Nicholas in the uh, right. top right I, I, I corner. Oh, oh, this will this will be good. This will be good. <laughs> Let's see. How long uh, is it going to take about twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> now they're all they're all about a minute, but let's see what Nicholas has to say. So this is Nicholas's um, uh, promo video, so you get an idea of the angel that is uh, Nicholas, and then we'll um, throw in our two pennies worth afterwards. So uh, enjoy. My name is Nicholas Woolwork. I'm an investor, developer, author, and owner of PropertyForum.com. My expertise is in property development and, in particular, micro studios. I love property because it creates a passive income. Um, it's a great way of generating wealth and freedom. I think to become successful, you need to be flexible and creative and work with lots of different people. The qualities I'm looking for today are an entrepreneur that's driven, someone that's creative and able to overcome problems when they arise. Brilliant. Well, that was embarrassing. So, it was um, quite embarrassing, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> bit of a, bit, a bit of a slow mover there in that uh, video. Yeah. Are you going to be uh, agile enough to pounce on the deals? I was doing the robot. <laughs> I was doing the Peter de 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 Crouch robot. <laughs> Brilliant. Good fun, so, right? Good and fun. Uh, uh, anything to say, guys? Did you enjoy doing that filming? Well, I, I didn't even know what micro units were two years ago, so I've learned something new. So that's always good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but they're going to okay. abolish them next year, probably, aren't they? So I've, I've made my hay for a few years. Yes, Definitely. yeah. You're, 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 so you're, you're responsible for making all these rabbit hutches, people. Are, uh... Yeah, but we're not, though, because ours are decent size. You know, ours are sort of 20 odd of square meters, they not these yeah. six square meter rabbit hutches that, uh, you know, that John used to build, of course. <laughs> they were called studio, studio flats in the 80s. Studio flats. Yeah, in the 80s, yeah. that was legal. Yeah, that was legal in the 80s. In the 80s or the, or the 60s? Yeah. Careful, careful. <laughs> okay, so let's introduce you now to um, uh, Paul Mahoney. So let me just get Paul's. I don't think I've seen this one. Uh, I don't think I've seen this one. <laughs> I'm Paul Mahoney. I'm a property investor, best-selling author, and I run a property oh. investment advisory company. I've been in the industry for just over a decade, and I specialize in helping people profit from property. That's including what they're trying to achieve, due diligence on the location and the opportunity, and then actually helping them bring that to fruition. I'm a big believer that it's not just about the deal, but also investing in people. So I'll be looking at both the deal being presented and the person presenting it. I think um, my immediate uh, question that I, I've just got to ask, really, uh, is that, Paul, uh, I mean, John's written some books, um, Nicholas has written some books, uh, but you're the best-selling author oh, uh, I, among the trio. Uh, has he outsold you, John? Ranjan, how many times have we heard that, eh? How many times have we heard it? Goodness me. Actually, you can get their books out. I've heard it. I've heard it so many times now. I believe it myself now. I've heard it so many times. <coughs> oh, brilliant! Who's no, got the most? Books, Sorry, who's got the most books? That would be John. Yeah, thank you, Nicholas. Yes, and another one on the way shortly as well. The fourth one on the way shortly. Oh, they're all on my bedside table. 
seconds. That, that's slightly <laughs> worrying. If that's true, Nicholas, I'm slightly worried about your sex life. <laughs> right, I'll tweet okay. a photo of that later. <laughs> Let's now see Helen's video. Oh, oh, this will be good. This will be good. The Angel Investors on Property Elevator. I've always been very interested in property and numbers is a real thing for me. And I took the skills that I'd acquired over my 20 plus years in finance and investing into the world of property. There's a number of things I'm looking for in applicants. I really want to see that it's a very well thought out proposition. I'm really strong and I'm really analytical on the numbers side of things. And I want to see that um, exit strategies have really been thought through and also that the numbers kind of really properly stack up. I also want to understand people's why. What's their passion? Why are they doing this? And why do they think this is a particularly good deal? I'd really like to see a lot of women applying. There are some wonderful women doing fabulous things in property right now. So if that's you, please do apply at propertyelevator.tv. What a brilliant intro, actually. You know what? What a classy, what a classy, what a classy intro that was. I'm slightly obsessed with the word numbers, but apart from that, <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. and, we, and, the, and the thing is, we know it's true as well, don't we? You know, I'd be scared pitching any numbers to Helen. Seriously, <laughs> she's Mine so like, on it. Like it yeah. normally. The only yeah. thing that was missing was like a calculator. I need a big calculator prop, <laughs> don't I? <God. laughs> well, get an abacus or something for the prop next time. <laughs> I'd say, but a, a, the best one so far by miles. Best one. Yes. Best now one. let's see whether whether John can beat that then. Oh, That's because no, yours hasn't this come on terrible. yet, John. <laughs> Oops. Now, how do I? What have I done here? Just Deleted me, probably. <laughs> I think, I think Ranjan's <laughs> accidentally saved us all from watching yeah. John's video. Oh, sorry. Yes, that's it. Oh. John, yes. I'm John Howard, and I've been a property <laughs> investor and developer for over 40 years. During that time, I've bought and sold probably over three and a half thousand properties. Now I get asked to speak at different events. I've written three books. I advise the government on one or two housing strategies as well. Over the years, I've changed my tactics and what I wanted to do and what, what I wanted to get out of property. And it's very important that you know what you want to do in property, because if you don't know, how the hell is anyone else going to know? So please, when you come to the show, make sure you have a plan it's clear and precise, and you've worked all the figures out. If you haven't done so, we will find you out. Don't let that happen. That was terrifying. We will oh, find you. We will find, find you out. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, I, when I said we will find you out, I really meant Helen, because she does all the figures. <laughs> If your numbers are wrong, Helen will find you out. Yeah, yeah. And, that and sounds really scary. Find, and, and may I say, didn't she find some people out? Um, some people that I thought were good on the show, she soon sorted them out and found out that, you know, their figures didn't add up and so on, which I had missed. So, you know, great on, great on Helen, great on Helen. In a well, nice I, way. I did it kindly. You did it very kindly, yes. I looked a bit formidable there, didn't I, I felt? Yeah. Very formidable. And, you know, and, and 40 years in the business. I mean, that's a, yeah. that's a long time. The, the first property was a cave or...? Yeah, yeah very funny. No, 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 it wasn't. And actually, there's a show on Property TV showing my first deal, actually, that Michael very kindly did for me. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Black and white. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And the one I'm really regretting, uh, or I'm not looking forward to showing in these guys' presence, which I, I guess I've got to do in fairness, and and uh, and uh, since I've shown everyone else's, I've got to kind of show you mine. So I think I've got to take their wrath. Uh... My name's Ranjan Bhattacharya. I've been investing and developing property for the last 30 years. I specialise in mixed use and commercial buildings, bringing defunct buildings back into life, and also doing simple, quick in and out, buy, refurbish and sell on type of projects. 
In terms of applicants, of course I'm looking for the numbers to stack up. The numbers of the deal have got to be sexy. But what I'm also looking for is likeable entrepreneurs. Likeable entrepreneurs with passion for their game, with fire in their belly, who know their due diligence, who know their numbers, um, and who have a track record of success. Well, Shall I go first? Shall I go first? <laughs> I thought you would. <laughs> as long as it's you're a quick asking, in and out, John. I mean, I'm not being funny. You're not asking for much, are you? You want experienced entrepreneurs who are sexy? I mean, where does it stop? Yeah, and he wants a quick in and out with them as and well. A quick in and about? out as well. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't I thought it was all a bit of a weird undertone. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, oh, yeah. Numbers twice. Sorry? Yeah, numbers twice. Yeah. Did I say numbers twice? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's 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 good in my book. That is very good in Helen's book. She did she said it about ten times. <laughs> so <laughs> what stood out for you in the I mean we we, we we filmed for a couple of days. I mean I'm gonna ask you all the sort of same sort of question. We we filmed for a couple of days and the, the way the filming works is there were uh, there was a whole series of pitches over uh, two days entrepreneurs came in the first time we saw them was when they came into the uh, uh, well, what do we call it dragons have a den what do we call it heaven did they come into yeah. heaven when they pitch to angels <laughs> michael what do you call it michael let's, let, let's go with heaven makes sense angels yeah. heaven come come and, uh, <laughs> so you know early gates and and then and then you you come into heaven and you meet five people who have got their head in their clouds and uh, you pitch and you pitch your deal <laughs> and um, uh, th th where was I going with that? Oh yeah, yeah. Out of those two days with all the deals, how many deals did we have pitched to us? Was it about sixteen or something? It was about that. Um, so, what stood out for you, uh, Nick, in that experience? Um, well, it was how much stick John gave me was was the main one. <laughs> Understandably, yeah, though, I thought I had to go and get therapy after the two days filming. <laughs> I suppose I'll get. I suppose I'll get the the bill for that as well as your expenses. Do I? <laughs> what about <laughs> you, Helen? Any standout moments? I was just overall like really pleasantly surprised by the the caliber, by the standard of, of yeah. people come in and the and the pitches. You know, they were generally well thought thought through, and were they weren't necessarily goers actually. People listened, they took the feedback, they were kind of open to, you know, to listening and to kind of taking on board our suggestions or, you know, our, like, you might want to try this, you might want to consider this. Yeah. So, so no, I thought, we think we had a, like, a really great bunch and it was, um, yeah, we all had a, a, a really good laugh and a lot of banter went on. So it was a pleasure. John? I think um, a, a few were a bit too cautious for my liking, a bit, not quite ambitious enough. And I can understand that it's their first deal. Uh, you know, they're coming into to, to an arena where, you know, a huge amount of experience in the room. Um, and I just felt some of them let themselves down, not by, uh, not by, not in a bad way, just not ambitious enough. You know, the deals weren't there wasn't enough in the deals to get us excited and get us want to do them because there, there was just wasn't, they were too small is what I would say. Perhaps not ambitious is the wrong word. The deals were too small uh, and we need, you know, they needed to bring a bigger deal to us really, some of them. Okay. Paul, what about you? Yeah, look, I, I was pleasantly surprised by by the, this caliber of the deals that were presented. I think, you know, more more deals were done than I expected. Um, so that that's that's a good thing. I was also very pleasantly surprised about how well we work together. You know, we're, we're all quite different. We hadn't worked together as a as a group before, and, and I think there was some great banter. And, and and I think John's quite right. You know, by the end, we're like a little family, which is which is nice. And uh, functional uh, family, he called us. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> and Michael, I mean, you uh, had a little to, to do with the selection process. I mean, I mean, there were quite a few applicants, weren't there? Yeah, exactly. There were approximately about 100 applicants uh, filled in the form on the website, which um, firstly throws up a, a logistical, how do we deal with, with this many people? And, and that was also, this was during kind of the height of the, the COVID lockdown as well. So we were thinking, we're going to put this out. 
how many people are actually going to be able to go out there and find it. So to get that many in in the, in the first instance was amazing. Um, we went through the process. Every everyone got a phone call uh, that got through the, the. There was a first phase, but then the majority of those uh, got a phone call, um, and the, the quality of those phone calls was fantastic. And it, it turns out that when the uh, the pictures came into the room, they didn't realise they were being marked out of five on every single element of of, of these phone calls, but they were. But the, the mark the marks were, were very very high. Um, and, and what struck me as well, what was great, other than the calibre that everyone's um, touched on here, is also the range of experience as well. We had some people with no properties and were getting on for the first time. And we had yeah. someone that had been a developer for, for decades and wanted a, a, a lot of money and a, and, a, and, a, and a lot of a big deal, uh, if you want to put it like that. So you had this huge range of people. So it was... Um, it was really, really, really yeah, exciting for me to, to, to experience that. So if you want to get a question to our angels or anyone on the show today, um, you, can, you can do so. If you want to get your guaranteed question asked and do a super chat, you can click on the little icon below the chat. We've got our first super chat of the evening from Yogesh, who asks, were there any plonkers that pitched? Well, Yogesh, Yogesh was one of the pitchers, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yes. So, yes. Hi, Yogesh. <laughs> well, aside from Yogesh. You can't say Yogesh, obviously. That would be really <laughs> well, Not that we would. <laughs> no, I don't, there was no problem. Was there? I think everyone was really professional. And, um, you know, as Michael said there, it was a nice range, whether they're a newbie or a really experienced person. Um, they treated us with respect and we treated them with respect. And it's a show where you can come on with a genuine deal at whatever stage of your career in property and, and you're going to be taken seriously and we'll analyze the deal that you've presented. Um, and it was, it was a good day. So no, for me, I didn't see anyone. No, and I, I think, think we... John was a bit disappointed that there weren't any plonkers, weren't you, John? Well, yeah. I was a bit, uh, to be fair, Helen, I, 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 by the end of the second day, it's a very tiring film filming schedule, by the way. Uh, Thanks for all the stunts. We do uh, all our own stunts. You know, we started we started very early and we finished quite late. And um, right. I have to say, we, everyone everyone got treated rightly so with respect, whether they were beginners or whether they were experienced. And I think that's the only, that's the only right way to do it. But I was hoping we might have someone come in, you know, one of those young cocky type guys who can take a bit of banter and take a bit of stick. Um, and, and actually, they're all very nice. So I was a little bit disappointed, Helen. You're right. Yeah. But that's down to the selection, I guess. The, the yes. I mean, it's not like, um, I don't know, what's that Simon Cowell show where they, they actually get people on who can't sing just to uh, rip them apart. I mean, everything, no. everyone um, that was on the show had something that was uh, broadly fundable. And it was yes, really down absolutely. to... Uh, uh, we wanted to do it and yeah. so many of the deals got funded which which actually surprised me i wasn't expecting the ratio to be so high yeah. too 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 high from a production uh, point of view you see you see a t television producer is never happy he's like a farmer <laughs> so too dry too wet he's never never happy and uh, and I, I i mean we've got to look at it don't forget guys you know we hope to make money out of these deals and uh it's our money going into these deals and they've got to be right. And um, I think the scrutiny that, that the people um, had on the day w w was very beneficial to everyone, whether they, you know, whether we did the deal or not. I think the viewers will learn an awful lot about how we think and about our different strategies. I mean, I'm still gutted, gutted. I wake up every morning uh, thinking of Nicholas Warwick now because he stole the best deal of the show, in my opinion. I'm not going to say what it is. You have to watch probably series four to find out but that's not the point the point is i'm gutted about it because i'm very competitive <laughs> you wake up thinking about me most days anyway john it wasn't just the deal well it's slightly concerning that i do but we are going to be doing a joint venture together so it might have something to do with it well i, I turn over and look at my bedside table and see your face on the front of your book every morning <laughs> yeah. so yeah it's the same thing <laughs> beautiful bromance boy <laughs> <laughs> very sweet no, there's a lot going on. Yeah, no, it's, it's certainly, um, uh, there's a, oh, we've got another one. Oh, we've got another super chat coming through. 
Oh, well, uh, Yogesh is asking a lot of questions. Anyone? No, no one else applying asking questions. Okay. Uh, well, ask, ask questions, people. Let's see them. Let's see all these questions. Yes. Any tips for pitchers in the next series, just oh, in case I apply again? Oh, I've got a couple of those as well. Go on. Anyone want to start us off? I'll start off. Well, I think, I think, well, if, if this is Yogesh from the show, he actually put together a very good pitch um, and was one of the best ones. Um, I think I think it was the only one we all competed for. Um, and, and he's probably a case in point of how to do it because he had a very thorough pack that told us everything about the deal. He knew it inside out. The numbers stacked up, which Helen loved. Um, he, he'd read all our <laughs> books. <laughs> um, well, as he said, he did. Um, so, you know, it was very impressive. Um, and and he um, mentioned Randy you, Dunn's YouTube. Remember the pack? Oh. It was books and YouTube channels. He mentioned. Yeah, he mentioned the YouTube oh. channel. I'm pretty sure. Yes. <laughs> One of many. There was a whole page. The remember, there was a whole, <laughs> a whole page, page with all the pictures of the books. It was it was genius. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, yeah, anyone else tips for the pictures? I think, I think as, as Paul mentioned, actually, to have a debt, like some people came and it was a printed out kind of one page of, of A4. Yeah. And I think you need to, you know, think about kind of who you're speaking to and, and kind of what the premise is. And, and that didn't necessarily set the right tone, even if the deal was good. You know, you're already kind of on the back foot and having to prove yourself if that doesn't look right. So getting the deck right, I think, is, is really is really important. Mm. I think what we're re what we're really saying, Helen didn't like that one page. She wants detail, rightly so. Yeah, but not too much though, because there was there was a couple of pictures, wasn't there, where you've got sort of 10, 15. Too much, too much yeah. Like, there oh. is a balance to it. Yeah, there is, yeah. Yeah, definitely a balance to it. Um, the, thing, the, the thing is, I think, is also to have a summary page. So you have an executive summary so you can see the yes, main features of the deal. And then you've got the other uh, detail in there to, to yeah. look but the other yeah. advantage, I think, I mean, it, some people just came with one sheet and we're all meant to share, which doesn't really help. I mean, so <laughs> it doesn't really help. But the, the other thing I think is, and some people came with no handouts at all. But the thing is, um, the thing to remember is we get the handouts a few minutes before you come on. So it is a chance to get yourself in front of all of us before you actually come into the room. Yeah, uh, we just get, we only yeah. get them five minutes or so before, don't we? And uh, but still, well, no, they, are the, they are the rules. They are up. the rules. They are the rules Michael made up, and they're good rules because the whole point is we have to be sharp and on the ball. We have yeah. to get up early and be on be on it from from the minute we get in that room because we're talking about investing a lot of money, and you know there is a risk you could lose the money if you get it wrong. So you know we've got to be on the ball. And it's the long days, and we've got to really be on the ball from the mi the moment we start to the moment we finish. So I think we did, didn't we do Thursday Friday filming? Yes. So right. the best time to for the pitchers to come on is try to get the Friday afternoon slot and see whether yeah. we're all a bit tired. <laughs> we have had enough. All, and we're investing anything. <laughs> all Ranjan, we haven't invested enough of our money. Absolutely. Yeah. That's true as well. Yeah. I think I think the pictures where we didn't get yeah, them. Yeah, I think I set you know? I think I new records for uh, drinking coffee. <laughs> a lot of coffee consumed, wasn't it? I paid for every cup as well. <laughs> Thank you, John. That's Very right. generous. I don't mind you. I don't mind paying them for you, Helen. It's the rest of them I don't like paying for. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were the uh, Michael? What were the challenges? Because I mean, it was um, uh, COVID and social distancing and all of that. Did that produce any uh, production challenges for you guys? Well, it did. I mean, the, the project straddled the whole of COVID. I mean, any of you, the eagle-eyed uh, viewers watching this now, will have noticed that. Nick's uh, introduction video was very different to everyone else's introduction video. That's because we had booked a filming day in the Shard, which is what you saw, um, to film everyone's profile videos and all of the different uh, marketing material. And we all got a, a, an email the day before from Nick um, displaying very close to COVID-like symptoms. And so the, the, the first challenge was, right, well, we don't have one of our angels um, for, for, for these marketing uh, materials. So from literally day one, um, COVID was uh, providing some issues. We obviously then went into full lockdown, which meant that 
people in the first instance couldn't look around properties as they may have and 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 that obviously progressed for the the period of time that everyone knows it did um John and I were having probably well, weekly calls at least discussing the situation, trying to second guess yeah. Boris, um, all, all those kind of things to get this. And then, and, and then, Mike, we had to find a venue that was open, which that's, wasn't easy. And that's yeah. once we decided we this this is the time that we're going to do it. We realised that our our location, which should have been the Shard, okay. wasn't going to be yeah. suitable. Um, and we needed to find a big open space with lots of everything that you're going to need during COVID. And, and so we had a whole change of location as well. Yeah, and, and I insisted on a five-star hotel, which didn't help, did it? No, no, that was particularly problematic. But we found one for you. So, <laughs> well, you uh, did, so thank you for that. <laughs> I, I think that's the least I deserved, given that I got stuck in the UK because <laughs> I came over to film the promos. So. <laughs> Quite right, too. You deserved it, too. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the, the, of that was in lovely St Albans, which was very close for me to uh, to yeah. get to. <laughs> yeah. So, where are we filming the series three? I mean, um, are we going to go around the world with this or what? <laughs> yeah. we're, we're discussing Malta a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, if, if Helen wants to, he, Helen wants to fly us all out to Malta. I think we we'd definitely be happy to do it there. But I think, to be fair, the venue we had, I thought, was very good this time, and I think. You know, it's there's lots of space. We could still be in COVID at the time of some sort, in, in you know, in March. So I think probably they looked after us really well there at Sopwell House. And I think probably we'll go back. I'd have thought we'd go back there. But we, as a family, we can discuss it and we can decide as a family what we do. Yes, yes. And, and I think it needs to be um, um, somewhere where you can drop off the kids where the adults can go and play as well. Uh, but anyway... <laughs> The other thing I was going to um, um, ask you guys really was the, it's an entertainment show, yes, and it's a show where real deals get done, um, yeah. but there's also plenty of learning. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I found it, um, you know, just great to see how all you guys think. We all approach deals slightly differently, and uh, I mean, I learned a lot, so I can't believe that the viewers won't learn so much about creative deal doing from this this show. I, th I think that's right. I think, you know, the one thing about property is it always surprises you. And there's always, you can always learn, you know, there's, there's always a problem you haven't had before or you didn't know about. And, you know, some people were coming in, owning property and, and getting into a muddle with it. And we have to unravel that muddle and help them. So, I mean, I look, I'm always learning every day. You know, every day is a school day, as they say. And, and, and when you think you, you, you can't learn anymore, that's the time you should be giving up and retiring. And I'm not doing that anytime soon, by the way, before you ask. <laughs> so, uh, I've got a, got a question here from, I can't quite read the name, Chosen <laughs> Juan, is it? <clears throat> um, and uh, this, is an, this is an interesting one, actually. Um, have you ever pulled out of a deal after agreeing on elevator? So what, um, anyone want to have a go at the sort of process that happens afterwards? Because obviously there's a little bit of due diligence and all the rest of it. I can start off there. Um, so so one, of, one of the deals that, that I did on the show, um, the, the sale prices were, were quite a bit higher than, than reality. Um, at, so when we spoke with local estate agents and found out the actual sale prices, they were quite a bit lower, which meant the deal didn't stack up. Um, so, so it didn't proceed, um, which was a shame because it, it certainly did stack up based on the numbers presented, but it turned out that wasn't the reality. So, yeah. and, I, and I think that's for the next series, certainly, you know, when people come in to see us, we need the correct figures because we don't want to waste, like Paul wasted time doing his due diligence and finding out, obviously, which we all, ha all have to do. But when you find that out, it is frustrating because, you know, people, we want people to come in with the right figures in the first place. You know, <laughs> um, that way, all the deals will get done afterwards. Whereas in reality, of course, and, and there's other circumstances that come up, which mean, you know, the person hasn't, it was agreeing to buy the deal and someone else has beat them to it in the end or, or whatever. It might be all sorts of different problems, but at least when you come into that room, make sure you got your figures right, because that is basics, you know, real basics. Uh, you know, and you get that wrong, then really there's no hope for you, to be honest with you. And always, always, 
underestimate the you know the yeah. GDV, the, the value of the units yeah, in example, and overestimate your build development costs. Yeah. And if the deal still works, then then bring it in. Yeah, I think that's really good. You know, as we always say, under promise and over deliver. I mean, we have to go on what's presented to us in the room. Absolutely. Yeah. And obviously, you know, afterwards there's a process of due diligence where we do a bit of fact check. And it's not just about fact checking, if you like, the figures presented or the facts presented to us in the, in the uh, presentation. But there's also uh, another part of due diligence is omission. Because some people may have missed out some things that they should have really said for us to fully appraise um, the deal. So there is a process of that due diligence that goes on afterwards. Um, and then, of course, um, it goes ahead. But basically, if we're committed to something, it's because we're excited about it and want to do it. And as long yeah. as everything stacks up, we want to do it. And we'll be featuring some of those, I guess, on all our uh, different feeds and, um, and, and, and whatnot later on. So people will be able to follow those sort of, sort of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's... Um, um uh, the market's changing all the time um oh let's do this other question here um uh total, um oh right okay um I, I don't know much about this because i wasn't on series one no um i just came on <laughs> I, did, I, I didn't do an episode of series one did you I? did do it you did one episode we did it slightly differently didn't we yeah for episode one yeah oh series one had a one. had a mixture of people didn't it yeah. Uh, yeah different angels in different shows yeah. yeah yeah i did do one episode yeah yeah okay the question here maybe this is one for john because he's been in every single episode since this yeah. began really um in uh, in series one um uh what was the sort of standout deal, if you like, of season one that got funded? That's from Imran Sheikh. Well, I think the, the series, series one was a little bit of an experiment in a way because we, you know, we were feeling our way a little bit. And, and this series, obviously, we got the, we got, I believe we got the format absolutely right. We got the right people uh, and we're in every, and we're in every episode, which I think is great. I think going forward, we'll all re-sign up hopefully for March. Um, the first, the first, um, the first series. Um, uh, Simon Zucci did a deal. Um, Simon did a deal in Wales that that, that was successful, um, um, along with Steve Jacobs, and and they both they, they, you know, because what happens sometimes, of course, if two people want to do the deal, sometimes they get together. I never do this, by the way. You'll find out during the show. But other people like sharing deals. I don't like sharing any deals um, with any other angel. Um, but some of them seem to quite like Amigo. holding each other's hands to do a deal, which I can't quite understand why. But anyway, so last time Steve Jacobs and Simon uh, Zush did a deal in Wales that um, they were uh, basically splitting a house into two, I think, and, and, re and, re and um, redeveloping and selling it, which they did successfully. Uh, so I think that was a standout deal and probably one. I did try and buy that myself. I, I agree the deal myself, but they... He, he, the uh, the guy went for um for for the two of them rather than me, which was rather disappointing. Yeah, uh, actually, actually, to that point, Ranjan, on, on the uh, property elevator website, um, there there is that case study as well, so uh, you can actually have a look at that property. Okay, yeah. uh, okay, I, I haven't actually seen that. Okay, that's good. And um, we're talking about series one. This is series two coming. Um, when's it, just when's the first episode telecast again? 15th of October, 18th of October, and series three um, with all of us again, that's in March. And if people want to register an interest in actually applying for that uh, to be on, the filming is in early March. Um, do you want to give the website name? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. Property um, it's uh, propertyelevator.tv. Yeah. Um, oh, got another question here. Oh, it's a super chat. Oh, Yogesh again. Okay, here. This is one for you, John. Um, uh, I'm paraphrasing it a little bit. It's not exactly his words, but why are you such a mino and don't like to share? <laughs> well, <laughs> part, well, to be honest with you, we can't say too much what happened in the show, can we? But um, he's got a bit of a cheek, really, because um, 
I believe I made him an offer. But anyway, there we go. Uh, we can't say too much, too much, because we'll spoil it. And Michael will get very cross with us if we say any more than we've said. Um, well, I believe you. I, I just believe it's business, you know. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, you know, we have we have great fun on the show, and and, and the, you're all my friends. But I'm sorry to say, business is business, guys. And uh, you know, however much I like Helen, and I don't mind the rest of you. Um, there's no way I'm going to give a deal up uh, or hold hands with anyone, not even Helen. I, I, I'm very disappointed to hear that, John, because I, I thought we we're family and blood's thicker than water and all of that, and I really expected more. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly <laughs> disappointed by that uh, that response. Uh, Steve Curtis, um, what's the criteria? Oh, what's the criteria for presenting a deal? Any minimum investment value or anything like that? How do you uh, get from a hundred to have <clears throat> many pets? Me or me or John? Who do you want to come in on? That? Um, well, um, I guess you, Michael, and John. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, so there is no minimum criteria. Um, I mean, even someone can even apply if they don't want any finance whatsoever. They just want their hand held through a project. That's the beauty of this for me. It's not just about the money. It's about the expertise as well. So it could be one or the other. They might want money. They might want expertise. Uh, they, you know, well, they might need something else. Who knows? It, within, within a property deal. Um, so, yeah, there's no financial um, threshold. Um, just if you go onto propertyelevator.tv, there's a simple application form where we ask some questions. You, you're not going to automatically not get through to the next level if you answer one of those wrong, for, for example, for a threshold. Um, so, yeah, no minimum. Just just fill it out and um, you you almost definitely get a call. And one of the, one of the deals, incidentally, that I did, uh, one of the two that I offered on, one of them didn't need any investment. It was just helping get the planning redefined and get the property resold on. So, yeah, as you say, you might just need some mentoring, some help, some confidence yeah. building, um, yeah. uh, you know, to maximize your current site and you feel our input would do that. Yeah, I, I, and, I, and I was very, very keen to start when we came up with the idea for the show and myself and Michael was that, you know, it was open to not just people with no money who, who want to get on the ladder, which is absolutely great, but also for people who may have issues or problems and what that, and what helps getting that problem solved. And I think that's really important as well. So that's why we didn't just make it about money. You know, it's also about uh, knowledge and experience and helping people, whether whether it's a first time deal, someone doing a first time deal or someone who, who, who has got an asset that they're in a muddle with and, pro and, and, and have got problems with it. Yeah. And actually, John, that's a good point. Just add on. something to that. Sorry. I, uh, basically, you know, I think JVs in general in property are, uh, you know, talked about a lot. And often it's someone that's got the money but doesn't have the experience or has, you know, whatever way around a JV is, or you've got a land asset and you don't know how to develop it. So you JV with a developer, you know, it could be any of those things. So we'd like to see as in, you know, as investors and experienced people, we'd like to see all these kind of JV scenarios come onto the show as well, not just people that need cash and are starting out or whatever. So if you've got you know, a land site or a site that you would like our experience to come in and JV with you on, that's also really interesting to get involved in. One of the interesting things I found um, about the pitches was that people would come in with a proposition and a particular pitch and after talking to us um, the deal would completely be reshaped um, in terms of what they wanted out of it and what they got out of it and it, and it was kind of improved upon in, in a way. Uh, it evolved and grew into or morphed if you like into something else uh, during the pitch uh, and that was immensely creative. And I think people are going to learn a lot about how to do non-vanilla type of deals from watching this, this program. Ranjan, I think so. And certainly, Helen, you know, with your skills on numbers, uh, you know, you turned turn around a number of the deals financially. So they looked at them in a different way because of the numbers and how you understand numbers. And because a lot of people come in, a lot of property developers are, are more like me in a way. Uh, so, so numbers are important to me, but uh, I normally have a partner or a back or financial person who tends to crunch the numbers for me. I come up with the the the, the, the sort of fact packet numbers, and then you know the the details done later, if you like, uh, to make sure the deal's done or not done. But but Helen, I I, I was interesting to see the way you work with numbers, and I think 
I think a lot of people can learn a lot. A lot of developers, potential developers can learn a lot from the way you did that. It's very interesting. I guess I should ask a supplementary to Steve's question. Steve, Steve asked the question, uh, what's the minimum value? I should, have, I should ask a supplementary, um, what's the maximum you'd invest, John? <laughs> well, in, well, interesting. What's the upper say, limit? <laughs> How much well, I can't say. I can't say. I can't say too much. But there is there is one <laughs> one particular deal uh, that that was pitched, which was quite a lot of money. Um, and you'll have to see. I think that series. I think that's episode three. You have to see whether someone had the balls to 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 um, to grab hold of that one or not. Okay. Just on the numbers side of things, I do think it's worth asking, you know, there wasn't kind of a minimum and a maximum, but what there was and the ones that kind of were less interesting for, for most of us were there wasn't enough juice in the deal. Absolutely. And, and that's what we're talking about when we're saying, you know, come with something interesting or John said, you know, he was disappointed because some of them were small. It's not that they were small, like value the, the, the profit was small. Yeah. There wasn't Just, enough wiggle room, particularly in this market. So that there has to be enough juice to be able to share in that. There, yeah. there was one or two that were really one person deals, not not JV. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's maybe a bit of advice for the people that apply for the next one is make sure there's enough in it to make it worthwhile having an investor mm -hmm. on board. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it basically you're saying, um, uh, is it worth getting out of bed for? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that is an element to it. I mean, some of these deals are, um, okay for one person, but not really worth the time. Uh, then, yeah, there's not enough in there. I, I guess it's all been said. Um, uh, a question from Steve um, uh, about follow-up. Um, I, I, I mean, uh, what are the plans to do any kind of follow-up on some of the deals that are done? I mean, we're not planning on that as official show. It's more on our uh, social feeds, isn't it? Well, I've, I've already started filming on one. Oh, that's right, good. Ah, there you go. I'm not going to say which one, of course, but I've always started filming on one. So, uh, and I expect um, all of us uh, will be doing that, at, uh, you know, during the process, I would imagine. Yes. Um, and Michael, I, I know Michael, you know, we're looking into that, aren't we, Michael, whether we can do a, you know, a follow on show later on of the ones that have, have been done. And maybe some of the ones that were agreed and weren't done and why they weren't done because actually you can learn more about them you know you always learn more about the deals that go wrong than the deals that go right in life you know it's like anything i guess um you know if you're if you all tune in and the ratings are any good then um it, it may all happen at the end of the day isn't it <laughs> sure yeah yeah it's all about ratings okay so so much is changing in this property market, guys. And, uh, you know, it changes by the day sometimes. And uh, there's the outlook for next year. And, um, you know, are we going back to work? Are we going in, uh, staying at home, you know, in, out, shake it all about? Um, and it, it seems like an eternity since this was uh, filmed and we committed to do the deals. Um, what are the challenges, do you think, about um, getting some of these deals um, over the line and being successful completed during the course of 2021 shall I go first go for it yes <laughs> go for it okay well I think I think all deals nearly all deals unless you're buying an auction all deals take longer than you want them to take you know there's always a problem there's always a lawyer not getting off his backside or her backside and getting on with it um, in my view, and I'm I, I've frustrated um, at the amount of time how how long these deals take, and of course the longer they take, the less you can do in a year. So um, the market has been amazing since we've come back from COVID. I mean, I, I'm shocked. I thought the domestic market would be okay, but actually it, it's it surpassed anything I could possibly imagine, and I think many people probably saying the same thing or i'm sure all of us think that next year um it's going to be tough you know unemployment's going to go through the roof presumably um still and i've been peddling the fact that it's a two-tier market the domestic market in certain areas and as my great friend paul mahoney says it's a micro market john so some areas will be good some areas won't be so good and some may even go up a little bit um, and I think that the, I think the dealing market, the you know what I call the dealing market, the 
the conversions, the, the, the new build. Um, I, I'm already getting offered deals. And I bought one in Birmingham recently, 20 part finished houses. The, the bank had gone bankrupt. The builder gone bankrupt. So I picked that one up after the auction. So, you know, it's already happening, already starting to happen. Helen, what's your view? Uh, Same experience for me, Joan. I've seen a lot of, I've seen a, a real uptick in things across my desk, particularly of the distress nature. And actually, even since the end of filming, I've done two deals since. So, yeah, there's some really interesting um, stuff coming up. I think there's going to be even more opportunities yeah. as we go along, which is, you know, kind of sad in one instance. But also, if you can help people out by doing those deals, then, you know, then that's a win win. So, um, yeah, very interesting times to come. And I think I think a lot of the economic data and and, and impact hasn't really been thoroughly a priced in and be honestly and genuinely thought about yet so i think there's going to be some rude awakenings to come i'm afraid i know i'm a little ray of sunshine i know but but um helen i mean a, a lot of the viewers may not know that you live in malta and you're speaking from malta right now but invest primarily in the uk um how yeah. do you keep your finger on the pulse of the vibe of what's happening here when you're in the sun out there and we're all in the cold here how do you keep uh, your nose to the ground of what's happening here well pre-lockdown i was uh, a really too frequent a visitor as a week in london a week here a week in london a week here clearly that's not been the case um, over lockdown although i have kind of been back and forth a couple of times and um, it's it's just communication it's just you know getting on zoom calls and and joining in and speaking to people and picking up the phone and it's it's you know it's unfortunate in one sense, but yeah, I've gone from my nice kind of semi-retired lifestyle pre-lockdown to I literally working like seven days a week, which which feels like 24 hours a day at the moment, just to keep kind of in contact, in connection, you know, exactly. It's it's a lot, lot more effort and a lot more time consuming, but then I've also got to know a lot more people and widen my network. So that that's been a delight actually. And uh, Nicholas, we were speaking about this earlier today. I mean the because you and I are both fans of the uh, the micro studios and the government have uh, changed some rules uh, today that under permitted development, uh, minimum space standards need to apply of 37 square meters per flat. Uh, I, I, well, I, I can go on forever about what I think about that change, uh, which I will do in a up and coming video. But uh, what, what do you think of that? <laughs> I think it's utterly ridiculous. I think <coughs> the whole point of PD is bringing in spaces. You know, I think the local authorities in particular, and I mean, it's obviously government led from a, from a higher level. You know, it's totally 37 square meters is, is utterly too much for a single occupancy unit. Uh, when when the space standards for HMOs are six and a half square meters for, for a bedroom, why on earth can't you have, uh, you know, a bedroom like studio of 20 to 25 square meters, which is extremely well space designed, beautiful spec, high quality fixtures and fittings and purpose built. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me what, what it's going to do. Um, it'll, you know, rip the bottom out of the, the, the any PD market conversions. Developers won't be able to make any money or, you know, any profit margin that is, you know, really tight in this market um, will not exist. It'll mean less property comes to the market. It'll mean there'll be less stock, which will, you know, enhance the supply, in, you know, imbalance in this country with not enough housing stock coming to the market. With COVID, the big developers and house builders are building less. The funding is going to be harder to get. It's just taken me three months to get three buy-to-let mortgages, which, funnily enough, got approved today um, by a particular lender who I'm happy to name, which was Paragon, and they've taken three months to do simple buy-to-let mortgages. Um, if you're watching Paragon, you can't pull my mortgage officer today. Shame on you. That's appalling uh, behavior. I almost lost all three deals. Um, and, you know, that's just it's just shocking. And, you know, they're covering their backsides, which I totally get, um, you know, because they don't know what's going to happen and they need to be investing in the good deals. But things like this are just going to make the market even harder to deliver good quality stock, which is much needed. Um, so what are they going to do? They'll offer PD, but then they restrict it back. So it doesn't make any money. So no one can actually do it in the first place. So, yeah, as I say, I could probably go on forever. Yeah, Ranjan, and we're we're having a call um, on, the, on the Property Forum chat show next uh, next Thursday, the 8th or 12 p.m. Quick pitch for us there. Um, and I'm sure we'll have a rant then as well. <laughs> oh, I've got plenty to rant on. And uh, I share your views, but I won't go on to them 
Uh, now I'll save that for a video coming up. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon and you'll get notified as soon as we upload. This is a, a this is, I, I don't know who's paid Yogesh to ask this question, but it's an absolute gift really for you guys. Anyone <laughs> writing any new books uh, oh. that we should read before the next series? I mean, this is, uh, who's, who's paid this guy to ask that question? It must be you, John. John, you're the, you're John the most paid Writer. Well, to be fair, the, the book I'm writing and the book I've written um, is, is really not for property uh, developers or investors. It's really for the, um, the domestic market because buying a house is the second most stressful thing. Do you know what the first thing is? Go on. Divorce. That's the most stressful. And this is the second stressful, most stressful thing is moving house. So it's a book all about how, how to de-stress from all that, get organised get a decent lawyer. And what comes out of all of my 40,000 words, my summary of it all is really, it all starts off with that solicitor. And if that solicitor you pick is not good enough, you will have more stress, stress than anything else. And um, really that's what it comes down to, which is very interesting. There's some very, very good solicitors in this country and there's some bloody awful ones. Yes. Absolutely. Anyone else got a book out? Well, I, not. I've, got a couple, I've got a couple in process, but they won't be out by the next series, I'm afraid. Good, good. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm on a race that. to get as many books as John, you see. It's like a, you know, it's like um, a bit of, you know, bit of banter going on there. How many, who can write the most books? <laughs> well, books are old hat. It's all YouTube now and you can get the YouTube property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit the bell icon, guys. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that guys i just had to slip that in um listen guys you've been fabulous i'm really looking forward to watching this show i mean, none of us have seen i mean i've been um hassling michael here to get a uh, some pre-release uh, uh, clips of this uh, this series we're all waited with uh, anticipation to see what it's all like and uh, see whether our embarrassing bits have been cut out. That's what I'm worried about. Um, Let's hope not. Let's hope not. <laughs> so it airs on the 15th. Um, uh, which Sky Channel again? 192. 192, 8 p.m. on the 15th. Um, you'll see clips of it afterwards on various of our um, respective channels and uh, feeds. Um, I'm going to be. Um, uh, so, sort of uh, releasing uh, 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 some of it on our YouTube channel with my sort of uh, post commentary on there. So if you want to see some of that, uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon on this channel. So that's Property Elevator. Absolutely great telly. Absolutely, absolutely great telly. When well done, guys. And uh, and and listen, thanks for letting me on. I mean, I, it's a, it was a pleasure to work with you guys and uh, see how you guys operate and. Uh, and uh, be part of this experience. Absolutely wonderful. Any um, anything you want to say to our viewers before we uh, let them go for the evening? All I can say is, you know, you've made it when John Howard starts quoting you. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> like I said, you can learn from everyone. You can learn from everyone, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I would just encourage people to, you know, to go to the um, Property Elevator TV, the website yeah. that Michael mentioned, and kind of tick that box for the, the stay in touch box, because I think some people didn't apply this time because they were a little nervous. They didn't yeah. quite know what to expect. I certainly spoke to a lot of people, especially lots of ladies that said they were going to apply and then it, it didn't materialize. And granted, we were in very, very strange times, so I entirely understand that. But I think some of it was just a case of confidence. And I think, or I hope, what people will get from this is they'll get a sense of what we're looking for, what we expect. And that will give them confidence to think, you know what? If they can do it, so can I. So that I'm applying. So do go to the website, tick that box, stay in touch and see you in March next year. Helen, you know it. what it is, though. I well mean, said, it, well they said. saw John's promo video and got scared <laughs> off. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry yeah. about that. Cut you out and all of that. I did come across, yeah. a, they have to cut me out next time. It did come across a little bit aggressive, didn't I? <laughs> I do apologise. As if, as if. The, the Simon Cowell of the group then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to have a balance, haven't you? It's got to be a balance. 
Nicholas, any closing remarks? Um, just, you know, jump on propertyelevator.tv, get your, you know, get your applications in. We want to see as many people on there and see as many great deals as possible. And, you know, thank you for having me on, guys. Um, it was thoroughly enjoyable on the day. What was, you know, echoing some of the comments today, some great, great pitches, some great deals. Um, so really looking forward to the next series. And, um, and, and, and Michael Hammond, I should say, uh, in, in Alan Partridge mode, uh, are we getting another series? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Michael, can I just thank you for putting up with us all? Because, you know, uh, of course, I'm really easy to work with, but not everyone's quite as easy as me, other Michael. And uh, shall we leave it at that? Eh? <laughs> No, it's a fantastic show. It, it, I'm I'm so proud of how it's come together, and, and indeed the whole team that are that, that are working on yeah. it at the moment. Everyone. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I agree with that. I mean, there's a lot of film crew, you know, sound, lighting, cameras. You know, it's 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 it takes a lot of organisation. It really does. And Ruby Howard, my stepdaughter, was was in the background organising all as well with you. Um, you know, with you, Michael. So. Thank you for all. Thank you for everyone who's involved. And may I also say, Lizzie, who who is our presenter, what a great presenter she is, and oh, and super. she put everyone at ease, uh, and she's got a really nice way about her. And I can confirm that she is signed up already for the next series. You lot aren't, but she is. <laughs> so uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and on that bombshell, <laughs> we have to end. Um, this evening's uh, show. So stay tuned for uh, series uh, two on the 15th and uh, stay tuned, as John says it says, to see who, which ones of us have made the cut to appear on series three. <laughs> please, 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 please. And see you guys next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.